Hi, it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another video edition of Widower Wednesday. I'm Abel Keogh, author of the book Dating a Widower, and today we're going to answer the question, how can you know if a widower is in love with you? I see this question on the Dating a Widower board all the time. It goes into my email box, and I know there's a lot of you out there thinking, Abel, I've been watching your videos, I've read your books, and you always say, if you want to know if a widower um, loves you, that he should show it through his actions, and the answer, that answer is correct, but I'm going to go into a little more detail. I'm going to clarify this a little, um, and what prompted this was... Um, I had a recent email exchange with someone uh, who was dating a widower and she asked that question, right? She wanted to know, well, how to, how to, how could she know if that widower she was dating was in love with her? You know, was he ready to open his heart? And so of course I responded with a question, well, how does he treat you? You know, what, what do his actions say? And she responded and she, she responded by telling me about all the nice dates that they had, you know, all the pl nice places they went out to eat or the concerts they went to together. And while that's good, those aren't necessarily the actions I'm talking about. That's more of the part of the seduction part of dating. And I guess the art of seduction doesn't happen anymore, but that's just more, more a part of just taking someone out you like, right? You don't, you don't necessarily have to have a long or want a long-term relationship with them. Just, hey, I, you know, I want to take you out somewhere nice. It doesn't mean that necessarily that the widower is ready to move on. Maybe he's just you know, looking to get in your pants or something else. There could be lots of reasons for it. So when I talk about actions of the widower, I'm talking about actions that should include some element of sacrifice. Uh, simply taking you out to a nice place or on a nice vacation or to a concert or just doing something that you like necessarily isn't a sacrifice for the widower. It's just something, you know, nice. And that's just kind of part of getting to know somebody, um, you know, somebody maybe that you know, you want to fall in love with. You do nice things with them. You get to know them a little bit better. You find ways to spend time with them. But unless the action actually involves some kind of sacrifice, um, it's hard to know if the widower, you know, is he taking you out to a nice place to eat because he loves you? Or is he looking to take you out to a nice place to eat because he's hoping to, you know, get some sex or something afterwards? Or is he just doing it because he likes to eat there, okay? So let's talk about, let me give you some examples of, of widowers who have some kind of sacrifice in their action. So for example, um, an example of this would be widowers who are willing to stand up to their kids, their friends, their family, their former in-laws who object to him dating again or don't think that you're good for him. Nothing worse is than a widower who cowers under the opinion of others. So an element of sacrifice would be he's willing to stand up for you despite of the relationships he has with other people. He's willing to show that you know you're not, he's not going to let you get treated poorly. That's an element of sacrifice. Or widowers who break to traditions of the past in order to spend time with you. For example, maybe every summer they went to the in-laws cabin somewhere and they spent the uh, summer with them, or it's the holidays, right? And the holidays, they always do something because um, it's the holidays and that's what he and the late wife always did. Or maybe they, you know, or maybe instead of going to the cemetery, he's, he wants to spend time with you instead of going to the cemetery on the date of death. The point is, is that he's willing to break with tradition to spend time with you. And that again, involves some element of sacrifice, right? Because you might have some disappointed people that he's not doing something that he and the late wife have always done. Um, for example, another example might be the widower is willing to sell his home or let you completely redecorate it so you can feel comfortable there. Again, element of sacrifice to that, you know. Um, another one, widowers, they're willing to take down the shrine, scatter the ashes, take down photos off the wall, pick up or pack up the late wife's things so you feel more comfortable in his home. All of those actions involve an element of sacrifice. Or widowers who are willing to start a new birthday, vacation, or other traditions with you. Again, instead of being tethered to the past and stuck in that mental prison, they're willing to try and start new things. An element of sacrifice goes into that. It's a sign that they love you. Uh, widowers who are willing to work through their grief and start chapter two, so or so they can start chapter two. Again, working through your grief always isn't easy. It always isn't clean. And in some ways, it's an element of sacrifice because working through your grief means, in some ways, opening your heart and making room for somebody else and putting feelings for the late spouse, someone that they love very much, kind of off to the side for a little bit element of sacrifice to that. Other examples is they won't let moments where the past intersects with the present. They won't let those moments overwhelm them. So there's always going to be triggering moments in a widower's life. Maybe he hears a song or sees a movie or something that triggers a memory. Well, guess what? Um, he'll learn how to deal with those and half the time you won't even know that they're happening. Again, an element of sacrifice, being willing to put 
his feelings kind of to the side for the sake of your feelings and the relationship. So let me give you some personal examples. Those are all examples. You can probably think of more. So again, think of things that your widower has done um, and ask yourself, you know, has has the things my widower has done lately involve an element of sacrifice? I'll give you some personal examples of things that I, you know, that I did that involved an element of sacrifice. So um, I sold my house that I'd actually bought soon after the late wife died because it was a house that she wanted. By the way, it's a house she always wanted to live in. I bought it and fixed it up before I met Juliana. Uh, when I met Juliana. I sold the house and moved so we could start a relationship somewhere else and start it fresh. Um, I had made the personal decision not to visit the cemetery more any uh, anymore after the first anniversary of my late wife's death. Um, that was the last time I went there, and it's been, i got to do the math here, what, about 15 years, 14 years since that's happened, and I haven't been back. Again, involved an element of sacrifice. I was willing to reprioritize existing relationships so I could make Julie number one. I, there were friendships and stuff I had to not necessarily, I just had to kind of reprioritize and make Julie number one. I had to, there's people I had to stop hanging out with as much. Doesn't mean we weren't friends anymore, but I had to kind of reprioritize some relationships so Julie could be number one. Again, element of sacrifice to that. Um, I gave away or packed up things from my first marriage that might hold me back. So I have some boxes, you know, there's two boxes of stuff in our garage, but there's a lot of stuff I gave away or just had to dispose of. Um, again, element of sacrifice to that, but I was willing to do it because I loved Julie and wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Now, these decisions weren't necessarily easy to make. It wouldn't be a sacrifice if doing these things were easy, um, even if they're the right things to do. Sometimes doing the right thing may seem hard and it may seem challenging. And often these decisions, they aren't necessarily between a good thing and a bad thing, right? So example would be like a widower's, you know, maybe every summer they go to the in-law's cabin and spend a week there. Um, Nothing wrong with that, really. It's it's not necessarily that's the that's not necessarily the bad thing. It's sometimes a decision between two good things or a good thing and a better thing. But what the end result is is making these hard choices is 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 your relationship. He's sacrificing for the relationship because he wants the you know the relationship to work. He's putting your feelings in the relationship over. For example, the you know the traditions of the past or his in-laws. And again, that's not necessarily an easy decision. All those things I talked about: selling my house, uh, deciding not to visit the uh, the uh, cemetery, reprioritizing existing relationships. They weren't just decisions. I said, "Yep, I'm going to do that." I put some thought into it, and they weren't they weren't the easiest. Uh, you know, I, did, I didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to do this. That There was some thought and some effort and some time that went into making that decision. Um, I'm glad I made them. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, but because I can say because of those sacrifices, I have a wonderful life. I've been married to Julie for 16 years. Uh, we have seven kids together. We have a great life. But none of that, 16 years together, the seven kids, never would have happened if I wasn't willing to make sacrifices for Julie and the relationship. And so, you know, when you think of these widower's actions, remember there has to be an element of sacrifice in there. When you think back to the things that your widower is doing, ask yourself, is there an element of sacrifice here? Because anyone, widowed or otherwise, they can come in and they can take you out to a nice dinner. They can take you to a concert. Um, they can, you know, whatever. They can go on vacation with you and they might have various reasons for that. Again, not all of them are noble reasons. Maybe some of them are, some of them aren't. But just because, you know, they're taking you somewhere nice or doing, so, or doing something nice with you doesn't necessarily mean that they're sacrificing. And the widower's actions who have that element of sacrifice, that's how you know I'd say you absolutely know if a widower is in love with you because men do not make sacrifices for women that they do not love. Full stop. Let me repeat that. Men do not make sacrifices for women what they do not love. If the widower can't sacrifice you, he sa sacrifice you. If a widower can't make actions that are some way a sacrifice for him, they're not fully into you or the relationship. Best thing you can do is to give the widower the gift of missing you, and once he believes he's going to lose you then he can decide if you're really worth sacrificing for. I'm Abel Keo. This has been Widower Wednesday. Author, I'm author of the book Dating a Widower. Feel free uh, to go ahead and watch another video or subscribe to this channel. Uh, always, you can schedule a relationship se uh, coaching session if you have questions about your relationship with a widower and want some clarification. Plenty of books and things in the links below as well. I'm Abel Keo, and I will see you next Wednesday.